rational functions. And this is kind of the most difficult part of this chapter. Um, so we'll, we'll go kind of slow. We'll do a lot of practice because it, it is kind of hard. For rational functions, we kind of have four rules uh, that tell us what to do. And the first rule is the easiest. Forgetting the domain of a rational function, um, just know that we can't divide by zero, right? If you take your calculator, you try to do like four divided by zero, five divided by zero, whatever, it's going to give you an error. Um, so we have to think what would make the denominator be zero, um, and that'll restrict our domain, anything that makes the denominator zero. For the range, we kind of have three choices for what can happen with the range. And again, don't, don't write this down. I'll give it to you at the end. Uh, and we'll look at the degree of the denominator and the numerator. So that's the, the bottom and the top of the fraction. If the degree of the bottom uh, is bigger than the numerator, we'll have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And this might be a new word for you, or maybe you've seen that in algebra two, but we'll talk about that. If the degree of the denominator is less than the numerator, so if it's the opposite, we would get a slant asymptote, which is no restriction. And kind of the, the last thing that could happen, are the degrees equal? Uh, then we have to look at the leading coefficient instead. So kind of a lot of confusing math language here. Let me kind of show you what this means and uh, I think you'll get a feel for it. All of these rational functions, you'll notice they're all big um, fractions. All of these are big fractions, and we call that a rational function. And here I'm asking you to find the domain and the range. So let's start by finding the range first, kind of working backwards here. We have three different rules we can pick from uh, to find the range. And the one that I'm going to use is this last one, rule number four. The degrees are equal. Uh, you'll notice this is just, uh, just an x by itself. This is an x by itself. There's no exponent. It's not x squared. It's not x to the third. These degrees are equal. Um, or also you could say this is x to the invisible one, x to the invisible one. Uh, but either way, these two degrees are equal. They're both x's. So we want to use this last rule. We want to look at the leading coefficients, which again is invisible one, invisible one. I'm just going to say y cannot equal um, one over one, invisible one, invisible one over invisible one, uh, which would simplify to just one. So y cannot be one. It could be any number besides one. Uh, we just can't use one it would kind of break this fraction. So the way that I write that in interval notation, just like we did yesterday, I'm using R for range. Uh, and I wanna write the interval that includes everything except for one. All right, so I'm gonna say negative infinity to one and one to positive infinity. Anything in between there, it just can't be one. Um, to join these two intervals, I also want to use the logic symbol that means or. This is a big U. All right, so that might be something that's new to you. This is the logic symbol for or. This just means it could be this or it could be this. It could be either one. We also have to find the domain. So domain, a little bit easier. There's only one rule for the domain. We can't divide by zero. So what's going to make this denominator equal zero? Uh, the denominator here is x minus 4. So I want to say x minus 4 cannot equal 0. Otherwise, we would be dividing by 0. To solve this, I'm going to plus 4 plus 4 to both sides. So x cannot equal 4. And really, that's my answer, just like this over here was my answer. Uh, but we want to write this in interval notation, like the questions asking us. So again, I'm going to use D for domain, negative infinity to 4, because I can't have 4. I can have anything besides 4. I'm going to use that logic symbol, the union, to join these together, 4 to positive infinity. All right. 
So I know, yeah, I know I'm moving a little fast here, but this is gonna be my answer. This would be the domain and this is the range. Let's look at another one here. This is number three. So this one even harder. Um, let's start again by finding the, the, uh, the range of this large fraction. Um, the first thing that I notice here, this is x to the third and this is x to the second. So the degree of the top is three, which is greater than uh, the degree of the bottom, which is two. So let's go back over and, and just look at which rule uh, we want to use for this one. So the degree of the denominator is less than the numerator, right? This was a two, this was a three. We're gonna get a slant asymptote, which is no restriction. So really, we don't, we don't even really care about this for domain and range. Um, if I was graphing it, I would care. But so for this, for us, it just means there's no restrictions. Uh, for the range, it could be any number. So I could say the range goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. There's no numbers that I have to skip uh, or kind of jump over. All right, so the range, not too bad. For the domain, that's going to be a little trickier. So let's go back to our rule for the domain. Uh, we cannot divide by zero. So what's going to make this denominator be zero? Um, this denominator is a big quadratic on the bottom here. So I could solve this uh, with the quadratic formula, or I could solve this by factoring. Uh, but either way, I have to figure out what are the zeros of this because we can't have zeros in there. All right. I'm going to do this by factoring because it's a little easier, but you could also use uh, the quadratic formula. Uh, the other thing I notice is I can also take out a GCF of 3. I could divide 3 out of all of these numbers. So this would be x squared plus x, and then 18 divided by negative 3 is negative 6. All right, so my first step, and you, you don't have to do that. It just makes it easier uh, to factor. You could also just factor it like that. Uh, we get the same answer. So let's go ahead and factor this. I'm going to get um, x plus 3 and x minus 2. All right, so I'm just factoring this. Um, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. 3 and negative 2 added together is just 1. So that's going to factor pretty nicely. Uh, and that means that x cannot equal negative 3 here because that would give us 0. And over here, x cannot equal uh, positive 2 because, that, again, that would give us 0. So this is really our answer. These are the numbers that I cannot use uh, or it's going to break the math problem. This is really our answer. Uh, again, I just have to write this using interval notation. This is working because I just, I can't have negative three and I can't have two, but everything in between that is fine. So I just can't have a number that's gonna make this equal zero, because uh, if we divide by zero, it just gives us an error. Let's look at number five and let's, uh, let's look at the degree here. The degree of the top, um, really there is no X at the top. There's no X up here. So kind of X to the zero. Um, but that's invisible. There is no degree for the top. On the bottom, the degree is 2. This is x to the 2 power. So we want to use this rule. The denominator is greater than the numerator, which means there would be an asymptote here at y equals 0. Uh, and that means that I would write the range again as an interval. So negative infinity to 0, not including the 0. And then 0 to infinity. Um, joining these two with that union, that logic symbol. So that's definitely a hard part, figuring out which rule you need to use. Let's also do the domain. So I need to look at the denominator and just tell what would make that equal zero. X squared minus three X, um, that cannot equal zero. And this one's pretty simple to factor. All there is, uh, there's a GCF of X which would just leave x minus three. So I'm kind of factoring out that x, that common term, which can't equal zero. 
Um, so that's going to mean that here x cannot equal 3 or else I'll get 0. And on the outside here, I can't make that uh, 0 or else I'll also get 0. And then our last step is just to write that as uh, interval notation. All right, so again, starting at negative infinity to 0. I uh, can't include 0, but I can include everything between 0 and 3 and then everything after the three. All right, and again, I want to join these with that logic symbol or the union. Let's go.